Hi, this is Meg Okura from Meg Okura and the Pan Asian Chamber Jazz Ensemble. Tonight I'm in the backstage of Rose Theater at Jazz at Lincoln Center in New York City with some of the best jazz violinists of our generation, Joe Denison and Jeremy Kittle. I wanted to ask them some questions about their re recent recordings and the process of making the an album and so each of um, you have released an album featuring the violin by the way fabulous albums very different in your in style <laughs> and will you each tell um, the audience about the, the album and the, the group and the instrumentation sure, sure. so uh, the name of the album is Worlds and the band name is Kittle & Co it's like my last name Kittle uh -huh. & Co and uh, the instrumentation is a little unusual in that it's uh, acoustic guitar, mandolin, violin, I'm playing that, and sometimes vocals, cello, and hammer dulcimer, and that's kind of our standard instrumentation for the album. Joe, Denison, tell me about Hello. your album. Um, the band I've had for many, many years is called Stratospherius. Joe Denison and Stratospherius, it's a progressive rock band. The last album released in late 2017 was called The Next World. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> Guilty of Innocence. That, the Next World was the one for it. Guilty of Innocence. And uh, it reached number four on the National Jam Band charts. Oh, it's uh, guitar, bass, drums, and electric violin, and vocals. Can you tell me about the, maybe the mic thing? Because that's Excuse always. Oh. Okay, sorry. We have to move. You know, you... So engineering and the recording process was like very important to what we wanted to do and so we thought about it a lot and uh, actually had the incredible good fortune to meet one of my favorite engineers for the style of music and the style of music that we wanted to kind of em emulate sonically uh, was the new acoustic style of music you could say or these kind of Sony, Sony classical records that Edgar Meyer does a lot of the time and Yo-Yo Ma does a lot and uh, and so we love the way those sound. I ran into the engineer who works on them, and so he gave us the basic idea, first of all, which is that uh, for what we did with those five instruments, we used uh, a main pickup, uh, which is, you know, this is often done. It's not like rocket science, but uh, we used a main stereo set of mics. Um, I think we used the Sennheiser 8020s, I want to say. It's been a little while. Um, because they were really great for the price. And um, and then we used spot mics, so to speak, on all the other instruments. And we also used some really close mics as well, so that we had the flexibility, ideally then, to, yeah, to, to kind of use that stereo image, the natural stereo image of the group uh, that you get with Do you own two... your own mics? I don't own those. Um, I own a couple. Uh, old KM84s, actually, which is what we used mm. on the violin mm. for the record. So, you're asking about violin sound. So that is what we used on the violin. That um, plus the main two mics for the stereo pair, mm. plus room mics because mm. really violin. You know, if you're going to go for the acoustic thing, mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's really the most beautiful when you're hearing it mixing in the room in a really nice sounding room. Mm. So that was another thing we picked. A room that had a high ceiling, an old church that's been converted into a studio, and a place called Rotary Records up in Massachusetts. So it was all those things combined, and then of course a lot in post and having a, a really awesome engineer work on it really helped too. Joe, what about yours? Very opposite of Jeremy because mm -hmm. yeah, it's I not mean, acoustic music. Yeah. yeah, we're we're basically a hard rock band. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working with uh, this engineer Rafe Tessar for over a decade now. I've done a bunch of albums with him and I love tracking in his studio because we work really well together. He's the keyboardist musical director for the band Renaissance from the 70s and uh, we have a really good chemistry but he comes a little bit more from a jazz sensibility so as far as I like tracking but for mixing I wanted to go a different direction and usually we, we record the rhythm tracks first. We get together with the, uh, the whole rhythm section. We lay down the foundation and mm -hmm. I like to record live with those guys, but uh, then I, I'll fix my parts, I'll record in my home studio. I always mic my Fender Twin, that's mm. the amp I like to play through. But now I'm more into uh, using amp simulators and going direct. Mm. Um, Interesting. 
and the bass goes direct, guitar is mic through an app. Yeah. Will you be wearing headphones? Like yes. That? Okay. that enables us to be in the same room. Right. Um, he's got a great studio up in Warwick. Now, he used to be in Ridgewood, New Jersey, Warwick, New York. So I, we, we recorded this in spurts. We did, we got a little money, we recorded like four songs, so then we released them as singles, then we wrote some more, recorded another two songs, and this was done over the course of three years. An experiment, I wanted to find a new engineer to mix, so I had like three different engineers mix the oh, first wow. batch of songs to my guy Alex Saltzman, who ended okay. up mixing the record, who we just clicked, and he was like a rock guy and got what I was trying mm -hmm. to do. So that was it. Wonderful. How many days or years or months or? Oh yeah, years for sure. That we did we work on it? You mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. We it was a long project mm -hmm. um, because I was learning recording? some things too. Actual the recording, recording itself was about a week. A week. And Just every day in the same studio. Yeah. Wow. And planned on that for yeah. So I definitely uh, invested a lot because right. you know I mean sometimes you're limited to a few days or something, but um, that's part of the reason we went outside the city. Mm. To, it's an amazing studio, mm. but it would be a lot more expensive if it were, of course, right in, in the city or something. Um, Rotary Records. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd been preparing for those recording sessions with our shows uh, for the year leading up. So writing the music that needed to be there to f kind of flesh out the rest of the record, mm -hmm and doing that in live shows with the group so we could be ready and have the music kind of internalized by the time we got there. Do you um, both um, use sheet music or...? <laughs> uh, we, I like actually, to, I'm very anal that way, I like to write everything out. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Surprisingly, I, even, like my drummer just sent me something he'd been working on, I'm going to transcribe it and somehow, <laughs> I'm, I'm very visual, I like to have it in front of me and then right. I go off on a tangent from that. Hmm. And every time I write something, I bring in I, uh, a lot of charts to the band, and then we're constantly tweaking stuff. And we also like to tour and break songs in before we go in and record them. Uh, actually, that group, mm -hmm. three out of the five people don't read much music, I think. And so, a lot of the time, I never made any charts in the end because there wasn't a whole lot of point. I mean, I could make a chart and then send them a MIDI file of their part, and we did that sometimes. Sometimes time with that group, I don't end up notating anything. Wow, and I also like not notating personally sometimes because uh, it gets me out of my head. Uh, for me, sometimes notation is extra information that it's not really true for me. I don't need to know that something is in five or even in three, or I don't want to analyze, I just want to feel it sometimes. So sometimes that can be helpful for me. Our drummer, Luciana, went into the wrong section, went into a different groove at the wrong time, but we kept it because it just worked some, as mm -hmm. a like outside the box kind of Even I love those anal. happy accidents. <laughs> really was meaningful for me were the times when we would get to know the music so well and internalized. I mean, one of the good things about not being able to read music is that you have to internalize it because mm. otherwise you literally can't play it. So, you know. A disadvantage advantage in a way too. Well thank you both. Bye. 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 <laughs>